Hey, what's happening, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to episode two of season two of King Penny's podcast, man. Hey, got a special guest today. Hey, I want to highlight, man, the Evolve uh, Health and uh, Wellness 5K at McIntosh Lake uh, this weekend, man. Hey, you guys show up and show out, man. All my crew, we're ready to go, man. Been training up, man. But let's get to it, man. We got our special guest, man. Hey, welcome. Thank you. Let's get your name and uh, where you're from. Yeah, my name is Rob Stout. Uh, I actually live here in Colorado. Uh, grew up in the great state of Ohio. It's very divisive as what uh, Midwest state you're from, but I'm from Ohio. We moved to Colorado right after I got out of college and love it, love it, love it. Yeah, so, yeah. family? F family, yeah. Um, married for 31 years to the same woman and she hasn't you know, I haven't, I haven't <laughs> slipped away in the night, you know, Yeah. but uh, yeah, um, 31 years with the same person is, uh, you get to know each other really well and you get to know the best and the worst. Congratulations. Well, man. thank so, you. It's a seasonal thing for sure. But, uh, <laughs> wonderful woman. She's a uh, teacher, second grade and uh, second grade teacher and just incredible. Uh, three daughters, uh, all in their 20s. So they're all in that season of life where it's just like, go get it. You're in your 20s. Go go conquer that mountain, go with plan A. You can downshift to plan B at any point, but go for your dreams and go get it. Yeah, so girl, girl dad, huh? All girls. Hey, All man. All girls. Yeah. So we want to talk about Roger here, man. What is it that you do? Yeah, so I am a uh, life coach. So I am a, I call myself, I'm a, I'm a personal life development coach, okay? And the reason behind that is a lot of it comes out of a sports analogy. When I was a kid, I was always with a team. I was always with a group of boys. We were always either jumping bikes, blowing something up, fishing, playing sports, playing basketball, playing football, doing whatever. Went through middle school, high school, college, same thing. Kind of had this, this pack of young guys that I hung around my 20s. There was a point where all of a sudden I was by myself. It went from pack mentality, you know, like wolves running together, to all by myself. And I hit some roadblocks in life. And I had some men who came along beside me and they were like, you know what? We're with you. And it took me out of this isolation phase into a developmental place in my life. And I have had men down the road for me like 10, 15, 20 years who had been through stuff that I was going through. And so the reason I got into coaching was to be that man in other men's lives. And um, I actually, I still have these guys in my life. I was talking about a man who's probably 10 years down the road from me. And he goes, hey, why, why are we having this conversation? And I just said, because you're far enough down the road from where I'm at right now. And he goes, far, I said, just far enough to bring perspective, to bring a sense of wisdom and so that's what I do I'm a personal life development coach and that could be on the executive level that could be on the individual level that could be on whatever level a man wants that in his life no man well let's talk about your company uh, sure Sherpa 5280 Sherpa 5280 first of all you have to you might have to explain the word Sherpa yes okay. definitely what is a Sherpa so a Sherpa is somebody who climbs a mountain with the mountain climber. Okay, so you are climbing Mount Everest and you are going with somebody who A, has been there before, knows the path, knows some of the, you know, the, the, the course we're gonna take, knows, hey, we're gonna base camp here, hey, here's a ravine here, but a Sherpa is somebody that climbs with a mountain climber. The Sherpa is not the hero of the story. It's not, you know, you don't see the picture of the Sherpa on the top of the mountain. You see the mountain climber on the top of the mountain. So um, the idea of coming alongside of another man and just saying, hey, I'm going to be your guy. And I want to help you get where you want to go. You're motivated to get there. But if you want a guide, if you want some help in that, not the star of the show, you're the star of the show. So what does that look like? It looks like sitting down and let's say it's you. We're gonna talk about your life, where you're at, what some of your needs, wants, drivers, um, things going on in your life and possibly hurdles and pain points, okay? Um, and it could, be, it could be anything, 
I talked to a man the other day. He was, um, he was like, you know what? I'm, I'm way, way, way overweight. I'm, you know, and I was like, well, is that something you want to work on? And his answer was, yeah, no, not right now. Okay. Let's talk about something else. And we came back to it and he goes, you know, I really do want to conquer this weight issue. Now, I'm not a, a dietitian. I'm not a, a psychologist. I'm not a, a workout guy like you are with your gym and all the things you're involved in. Um, but I am a coach. And I'm like, okay, we're going to dig into that. And we're going to set a plan if that's something you want to work on. Like, you could say, hey, I want to be an astronaut great dream but if you don't want to put the work in to be an astronaut or guitar player or a bodybuilder whatever if you don't put the work in to get there and it's not an internal driver there's no need in having somebody come alongside of you because i can't motivate you to do that but i can walk with you along that course so what it looks like is very simply sitting down talking with a man about his needs wants desires drivers motivations all of that and helping him get there because the reality is the vast majority of people have like me i have a lot of dreams and ambitions in life and all of that but unless i dedicate myself to that and unless i bring in some specialists even for a season i likely won't get there by myself so so, so bringing a sherpa into your person like so it comes full circle so bringing a sherpa into your personal life to kind of navigate a little bit and help you know what I mean? Through those uh, pitfalls or those roadblocks and those hurdles. Absolutely. So tell me about these seminars that you do. Mm -hmm. The seminar is called uh, the With Everything Men's Weekend. And I'm a specialist in men. That would probably be good to, to tell your audience. Uh, yeah. So I deal with men. Uh, the reason being I am one. I've been there. Um, and that's just my passion is the development of men and being a voice and a, and a helper, a Sherpa with men. Um, the, the weekend is called with everything and what it is, it really breaks down into, uh, four quadrants of a man's life. Okay. If you picture you're, you're more than just physical, you're more than just mental, you're more than just emotional. It has to do with all of those aspects of heart, soul, mind, and strength. Okay. And the heart is really the, the control seat of your life. And the metaphor we give to that is the king. Part, and it's the part that looks and wants to create space for others to live in uh, kind of an influential realm, if you want to call that. And we all have that, big or small. We all have that where, place where we influence. Um, the, the soul is the passion side of your life. It's I call it the lover. It's the part that connects. It's the part that, and not just you think about uh, women, you think about uh, children, kind of the love side of things. But that's just the part where you connect with another, another brother, another friend, another man, another, another person. Um, so we take a look at, at that. The mind is the mental part. It's really the perspective part. Um, and it's kind of the sage wisdom part. So it's what we're taking in, our perspective in life, and all of that. And then the strength. Our strength is our physical side. It's our warrior side. It's the part that commits to action and makes it happen. And what I've found is that it, throughout the course of my life, all the things I've read, um, seminars I've been to, even church involvement and stuff like that, they usually talk about one aspect. So the gym, you might just talk about the physical, but you know this, it's as much emotional and mental as it is anything yeah. else. And so that all contributes, right? Um, so it's heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I explain it like this. You're really built like a truck with four wheels on it. A lot of times we are one big inflated wheel and three other smaller wheels, right? We have one we lead with. Uh, I am naturally go get it done, take action warrior. Yeah. Uh, but pretty connector too. So I'm warrior lover. I rarely stop and consider the consequences of things so lower on the sage wisdom side and so I need to be able to go hey a man I'm big in these areas here are the pitfalls of this I need other men involved in my life I need perspective I need wisdom and so that's really what this does is it number one it validates who you naturally are presents some pitfalls maybe but um, gives you a sense of hey I was made to live with everything 
that's what it's all about. So what I hear you saying, right? <clears throat> like, so you're a nurturer of people. Yes. Right. So you don't have to answer this. And if you don't, please say something. I always do okay. this. I don't know why. That's okay. What would be your pushback on how society has, like, or you see in the media or anything like that when they use this term toxic masculinity when you, like you yourself, are the polar opposite, I guess, of what they're saying and everything like that? Like, what would be your pushback when you hear this term? I will absolutely answer that. Oh, okay. I'm glad you talked about it. True and not true at the same time. Okay, true, and then a lot of men, and I get really passionate about this, yeah. a lot of men abuse themselves, they abuse women around them, they abuse children around them, they abuse the world around them, they are toxic, okay, they're mostly because they're wounded, they're deeply wounded, okay, that absolutely, but that, that term. The reason I hate that term at the same time is because I think there's a movement that says masculinity is not even necessary. Sorry. That masculinity is this whole gender neutrality thing and like we're all just in this gender blender. I, I totally disagree. Totally disagree. And it seems to be taking the protector provider side of men and getting rid of it and dumbing it down and, and we you and i both see that everywhere like where are the men who are going to stand up and go no that's wrong or as for me in my house or my apartment or whatever no and here's where we're at because we've got so many influential factors around us that do have an agenda and i want to see strong men go you know what we can have a healthy debate about something i want to know what you think i want to know why your story, all of that matters because it influences. We're from, I'm assuming, very but different backgrounds. where do backgrounds. these conversations start? Because if you have, like right here, even on this platform right now, if yeah. you have it, some people would hesitate about answering the question. I appreciate you for well, answering. Or they would kick back on what I think, exactly. which is fine. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, it's a healthy it's a conversation where is, you know what I mean? You're expressing your opinion, your thoughts, your views, and everything like that. But we live in a world that's so, like, canceling. Like, or, you know what I mean? Or anybody just won't even touch it just because you know what i mean like they don't want business mm -hmm. or anything like that so the fact that you're answering it and the fact that you right. took it on shows integrity and accountability right then and there like that hey let's leave this out let's well, just talk about what's real let's face it our culture has lost the ability to dialogue indeed and we have become so polarized and so tribal we're throwing rocks across you know what i'm gonna walk across the street and go hey what's happening you know, I, you're a black man, I'm a white man. Our, I'm assuming your cultural experience is very different than mine. I was watching a show last night on Bill Russell. The stuff that he went through in the 50s, I was almost in tears. And, and yet, that wasn't my background. But guess what? I heard some of the things out of my that were yelled, that he quoted as being yelled in the stands. And I'm like, that breaks my heart. Why? Because we're human beings, man. We are not. the, But we're being pushed into these tribal places and ending of dialogue and ending of people just coming together and going, you know what, let's let's dig into that. Can we dig into that? It's going to get tense. Okay. It's good. Yeah, so definitely we need... You know what I mean? Does that no, make, does that no, make no, sense? no, it makes sense because we need more people like you to kind of bridge that gap. You know, I mean, even if, if even if it just starts with men alone, right? If you can bridge the gap, because they're going to take it home, right. they're going to take it to the workplace, they're going to take it to their gyms, they're going to take it to the, you know, just being human, mm -hmm. just humanizing each other, listening, and Absolutely. just being there is good. Well, and let me throw this in: not only doing that for the sake of learning how to think critically, but when it comes to the internal space of my life getting perspective and having another man ask you a question after trust is earned and it's not given it's earned but to ask a question hey penny here's what i here's what i what i'm hearing you say can i ask you a question and we're in a coaching relationship and it's one of those questions that you don't know is even there because you don't see it in your life and i just say does this have to do with this or how does this play out in your life the reality is we don't know what's going on a lot of times inside of 
us, right? And so to have another person in your life who's objective to that, who's like a trainer in the gym going, man, you know, Rob, you may be doing good in one area, but your legs are, you need to work on your legs. Oh, I didn't even know. You know, I didn't even, ha- I didn't even have an idea. And so just having somebody in your life to point out or to, to help develop the whole person, that's really, that's what I, that's what I, I love to do. Yeah. And I love having those people in my life. And I've been gifted that I've had people in my life like that my whole life, literally. So talk to me about this book. Yeah. About your uh, new book. Yep. Out, man. So uh, Getting Even, Countering Life's Hard Knocks. Okay. It was really, um, I came across a quote in a season of my life that was extremely difficult. Uh, it was a uh, um, Mark Twain quote. And it was from an older character in one of his one of his plays who was talking to a younger man. And he said this, the character said, um, a man should not wallow in his disappointments. Instead, his objective should be to get even with them. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hmm. And I started really thinking about that. Like, there has got to be a, not getting even with a person, it's not vengeful, but it is something happened in my life. I took a hard knock and what am I gonna do? Am I gonna stay down? Am I gonna wallow in my disappointment as Twain says? Or am I gonna take the opportunity to, to get even with it? And so counter, countering life's hard knocks. And um, the book's pretty personal. Um, very personal actually but it came out of a season of my life when when I had gone through a a failure with a particular um, situation I was in Uh, I put we put all the chips on the table uh, went back got a master's degree and actually had to do with the church Uh, I was in a uh, I was a leader in the church which you might be like what in the world but we put all the chips in on this particular venture we were involved in and it didn't work out and four years later with three kids, three daughters, a wife, a mortgage, yeah. I was like, man, I got to get in a better spot. And um, the toll that that failure took and me beating myself up over it and the ensuing really tough time economically, um, I went through a very, very, very challenging season. And I'm not talking about six months, I'm talking about years probably about seven years of, uh, I was medicating, I was binge drinking. Um, I was just trying to escape. I was trying to find, trying to grasp for purpose in my life. I was, I was hurting internally. I was deeply angry and disappointed in myself. Um, and I began, that was a season of my life when another man came alongside of me and just said, Hey, buddy, I love you. I care about you. How can I help? And it was like a guy reached down in a pit, just grabbed me by the arm and said, do you want out, first of all? And second of all, I'll help you, right? The whole book was basically a writing process of that whole season. And um, it's really broken up into a couple different areas of number one, Uh, hard knocks happen in life. You could be born with them. You could be not think you deserve them and they hit you anyway. You could be looking for them, just kind of being one of those people who just stuff happens and you know, you don't know why. Or they make it happen and don't even realize it's happening. But it's understanding what's happening in that process and allowing something to happen different inside of you because of what's happening to you so that something can happen through you. So something happens to you so that something can happen in you so that something can happen through you. And that is a process. And that's really what what the book is about. No, I definitely so. can relate, man. Like, Cause you know, somebody asked me, <clears throat> why did I open the gym? Yeah. You know, just- Why did you open the gym? Well, just because I found a discipline and a peace in my life, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? That I didn't have before. Right. And I wanted to give it back to people like my, mm. you know what I mean? Hey, this is what I found here. And hopefully yeah. you can find that same piece. And hearing you talk about how other men stepped up and helped you in your difficult time. Absolutely. Now you are the guy that reaches down and pulls up others. Is like, you know, in my mind, mm-hmm. there is n- 
it's people helping people. It's, it's people reaching back and digging in and giving back what was given to them. Absolutely. And, and that my word for that is redemption. Yeah. Like going, there is purpose in this story, right? And I, there was a man who, uh, eighty year old, he's, he's in his eighties now. And it was several several years back, um, and I just I got a twelve step book. I didn't want to go to an AA meeting when I was struggling with the binge drinking side of things. Um, I didn't want to go because, number one, I would want to be the best recovering guy there. And I would want to fix everybody else. <laughs> it's just my nature. <laughs> I'd want to be the star of the show yeah. or I'd want to fix you instead of working on me. And um, his name's Dallas. Um, but I just said, hey, Dallas, you've been through this stuff in your life. Can you let's just meet and walk through this stuff? When we sat at this guy's table for I don't know, the next four months, every week, and just work through 12-step stuff. And um, changed my life, changed my life. Um, and it's interesting that I'm in the same process with another man now, who's in his mid-30s. He's struggling with the same thing. Sharp guy, smart, family, hardworking, really good man. But he came to me and he just was like, hey, can you help me? And I was like, I, t I tell him every week, I said, I, it is amazing. I never thought I'd be in this chair helping you. I said, someday you will be in this chair. And he was like, oh. and I said the same thing when somebody told me that. I was like, you have the opportunity to pass this gift on. So what's the overall goal of Sherpa 5280? So it's not just seminars. No. It's not just books. No. So what what is the overall? The overall goal is I want to help men grow into what they were created to be. Okay. Um, I want to help men grow in the 360 of their life, the heart, soul, mind, and strength through my story, through writing, through coaching one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I do a lot of speaking. I do seminars and all of that. I want to go impact, I'll say it here, I don't care, I want to go impact a billion men of my lifetime. And what I mean by that is throwing a, throwing a rock in a still lake and seeing the ripple effect of that into not only men, but their families, their societies, their places of work, at Starbucks. Like, the ripple effect of what you can do in life and that billion, like, how is that even? How do you measure that? I think I'll find out somewhere in eternity. Yeah, because you're always you know? uh, you're always pretty positive. Because even when you came here, I was telling you, yeah. I was just looking at your Instagram story on my way. Yeah. And you always are putting up something good. You're always in all your posts and everything like that, man. And seeing how you move with your family as well, like mm -hmm. your daughter's support, very supportive and everything like that. It's motivating. You know, I think when I met you. You know, I mean, yeah. we met in passing right here, here, yeah. here and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And just your genuine interest or your, you know what I mean? Like, you even complimented me then. Like, oh, man, you do this. You do this by yourself. Oh, right. You like, know what I mean? Go. Like, just hearing that, like, just, you know, opening a conversation mm -hmm. just like that, man, really was like, oh, oh this guy, man. Something like, different. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, man. And so the positive way you carry yourself, man, the different things and the way you inspire is it, it's a breath of fresh air, man. I, I, and I just want to tell you that. Look, I appreciate that, genuinely. And here's the thing. There's so much, and, and this is cliche, but there's so much negativity. Anywhere you look, we were talking about the media. Yeah. It's built on fear and, and addicting you to go back because you're, you're, you know, you're, you're fearful. It's a very primal instinct that they know exactly what they're doing. Why not be the guy at at the 7-Eleven who's talking to the person and being like, hey, I hope you have a great day. And I, everywhere I'm at, service people especially, thanks for being here today. I appreciate the fact that you're here working. People are like, whatever, I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> Chatty. Yeah, but I, I don't <laughs> care, man. I'm glad they're here. But I think it makes people uncomfortable. One guy, uh, last season, episode uh, three, right. real estate guy, great guy, Noah. Okay. Hey, man, after the podcast, he, you know, we're done and stuff like that. And we're just sitting here chatting. He goes, hey, are you okay? Like what? Right. They like he was like, no, really? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Like nobody really cares. They just say, hey, keep pushing forward. So it kind of threw me through a loop. Mm -hmm. I'm in the corner, 
Look, I, you know, as a man, I feel, hold on, what's going on here? Right. Like, you know what I mean? But it was like, when I went back and thought about it, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, wow. That was like, for another man to like, mm -hmm. to ask me that, to really show genuine concern, it means a lot. And I'm sure you have these aha moments all the time at your seminars or talking to people where guys, they get it. Mm -hmm. Huh, I don't have to have this guard up all the time. I don't have to, you know, be, you know, like just overly, like I said, masculine or, or what we were taught. Right. Might not be like, you know what I mean, the complete best way. Uh, absolutely. And we were talking about this prior as yeah. well. Uh, typically, men, uh, and this isn't completely on gender lines, okay? For example, I am way more emotional and emotionally in tune than my wife is. People are like men are men are not emotional. Women are eh, no. I, so this is not on gender lines at all. But I find with the men I work with, we have not learned to be in tune with our emotions. Okay, so I could be deeply angry. True story. Okay, I was going through the season I just told you about. I was angry. I was bitter. I was deeply hurt. I went to the doctor for a physical. My blood pressure was so high. I think it was like a 170 or like 120 or something like that. They took my blood pressure. They took it three times. They called my doc. The nurse was doing it. Who was at like a Starbucks next door. He comes in. He goes, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, you are, you're going to have a stroke. And they were like, get me on you know, blood pressure medicine and stuff like that. And it wasn't because I was out of shape physically. It was because I was out of shape emotionally. And that was triggering my body. And the reality is the body, our bodies and our emotions and, and mentality, it all works together, man. It, it, we're not just one dimensional. And so I think with helping men particularly uh, understand like, hey, absolutely, what is going on? You know, and I can look in your eyes and be like, dude is curious, he is tired, or, or he is excited, or, or he is depressed. And the reality of just helping somebody go, okay, that's what's going on in my life, you know, and integrating that with the rest. And sometimes we're so wired in a different way, uh, you know, uh, processing things mentally or whatever, we just don't have a lot of time to venture there. That doesn't mean that what I do is always, you know, there's tissues in the room and it's a cry fest. Not at all. But we just help men develop. You know, that's what we do. So. So what other stuff? So we got the book. Mm -hmm. Where can people find it? Great. I'm so glad you asked. Go to Amazon, <laughs> Amazon. and look at um, Getting Even, Countering Life's Hard Knocks, Rob Stout. You know, or you can email me. I would be glad to send you a little link. I've got a little private store. Give us the email so it I can write it under the bottom. Bob at Sherpa5280.com. Okay. Right? And the 5280, because someone in Japan is going to be listening to this, they're not going to they're not going to know your podcast is going to reach the world, right? That, five, that, that, that one billion you're talking about, I'm going to get up in there. You're, you're right <laughs> there. 5280 is the elevation of Denver. People here know that, but a Sherpa is the one who helps you climb and 5280 it was actually a trademark issue. I had to come up with something, so I did Sherpa 5280. Okay. And uh, but it's Rob at Sherpa 5280.com. And when is the next seminar? Um, I've got one coming up in uh, September 22nd through 24th. You can email me about that. People out there in uh, podcast land can email me about that, and I'll send you some uh, some some info. And okay. it's with this one is particularly with a with a church group. Um, and so, but love to have you and i've had and by the way that is like oh gosh it's a church group what are they doing they're either handling snakes or i'm not going to understand it or whatever yeah none of that i've had some guys who uh are not necessarily of faith come to this seminar um and um then they were like hey i don't buy into all you didn't do anything weird number one so thanks for not alienating me and doing like insider church language whatever that is but um, <laughs> it sounds like a different language. You're like, I don't know, man. But um, it's it's not it's as exactly what we're talking about here is the nature of what we're doing. Um, but uh, the guy, the one man said, um, he goes, hey, he goes, I'm not in. I don't necessarily dial in with all of what you're talking about, but I get it, and I needed what I got this weekend. I was like, fantastic. 
huge win. Right. And then is there anything else that you're working on or anything that you you have upcoming here? You asked some great leading questions, Penny. I love it. Hey. Um, yeah. So I am uh, actually starting my own podcast. Hey. Um, it hey. is. Uh, it's going to be specific to men's development. And if somebody wants to get on a, uh, um, a tell me about it when it starts list, just email me, Rob Sherpa5280 dot com. Hey. And uh, I haven't even given it an official name yet, so maybe. I don't know, maybe we can name it right here. I don't know. Hey, man. <laughs> hey. <laughs> no, but I really like it, man, because I, I, I think yes. you have a lot, a lot of great information, a lot of insight, and a lot of different things to offer, man. Mm -hmm. My thing is this. This is the last thing, because I yeah. feel like I want to say something, but I don't know how to word it, and I think you're better. Look, you're better than this. Anybody struggling? Yeah. Any, like, uh, any man in particular, mm -hmm. or any person in particular, struggling or thinking that they want to reach out for help what advice or what would you say to them right now like so i would say this there there chances are there are people around you who care about you way more than you think they do right so for example uh, just getting to know you on the level that i do uh, which is not super deep right we we're not all that deep but I, I could probably reach out to you and go hey penny i i've got a i got a question i got something you know can can you help you know um it's kind of like who would stop and help somebody change a flat tire on the side of the road well you know i, I would you know somebody will somebody in a person's sphere of influence or sphere would would be curious you know, and some people don't have anybody. That's kind of why I do what I do. Um, I talked to a man, um, it was a great conversation, successful in business, also in real estate, like your friend, uh, really successful, just a baller in life. Um, but he made the comment to me, he goes, Rob, I don't have anybody in my life. I got some surface friendships, but I don't have anybody. And my comment was you don't have to be in crisis to reach out you know a lot of us necessity is the mother of all invention right pain is god's megaphone to a broken world broken world it kind of peaks our you know when you're in pain you do something about it but proactively in your life like what is your next step that's a great time just to have somebody you know on retainer like hey you know and so I would say, to answer your question, there are a whole lot more people around you who care about you than what you think. Um, and just reaching out and being vulnerable. And you don't need to be broken, but you can just say, hey, I need, I need some help. And chances are there's somebody in the world who can do that. But how do you reach out and get people to slow down and do that? Like just to, you know, because we're in a fast paced society now. I mean, it's only getting faster. I know. And like you said, even, you know, like, the changing of the tire and stuff like that where people don't have time or people feel as though others don't have time sure to, and you get bystander syndrome right? yeah yeah so 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 how do you cross that barrier how do you push through that well you develop it proactively okay um i again in the book there was a conversation with with a man i had and i was just talking it was in more in a group coaching situation and I just said, you know what? I, I, I said, oh, I would love you to take inventory of the people you've had in your life. And I, and I kind of, it was just a little exercise we were doing. And I started when I was like in elementary school. Man, there was this guy, there was this guy. Middle school, there was, you know, this coach, high school, this coach, this coach, this coach. A mentor who came in when I was right out of school. And, and I started listing these just names of men. And nobody knew who this guy was. Nobody knew Tom or Todd or any of these guys were. And this guy was sitting in this coaching group, in this group coaching situation, and he just kind of had his head down. I was like, can I ask you what's going on? And he goes, yeah. He goes, I've never had anybody in my life, period. And I, I, was, I was surprised, number one, but number two, the, a lot of the reason why I had those men in my life as I started thinking about it, I, I reached out to them, you know? And so I think the proactive side of that, like before you get in trouble,
or you're all by yourself, cultivate a few guys, just a few other people in your life, you know, and take it to a deeper level. Read a book together. Read this book together. That's another plug for the book. But there are questions at the end of each chapter. Man, to be able to read a chapter of that, answer the questions, and sit around and talk about it with a group of people, that's a huge step, right? But what it does, it cultivates um, some trust, some other people in your life who are a little, you know, below the surface, next step, but also some vulnerability and, and some camaraderie, right? So before you get super isolated and wounded and hurt, run in a pack, run in a team, right? And it goes back to your original point, you know, building that trust. Mm -hmm. That to to be able to bridge the gap Absolutely. between between us, man. Absolutely. I want to tell you, I want to thank you, man, for taking the time to sit down with me. Oh, you're you know welcome. what I mean? I know it's hard for a guy like you throughout the day. You know what I mean? I'm sure you talk to a lot of people. I'm sure, you know what I mean? You have a lot going on. But like I said, man, you finding the time means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. uh, you're always positive, motivating, uplifting, man. Like I said, man, keep doing great things. Uh, look forward to checking out the book myself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slow down and do it. Yeah, I've been looking for something to read anyway, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, before we go, let's give the Instagram uh, handle again. All right, Sherpa fifty two eighty. Sherpa fifty two eighty. Sherpa underscore fifty two eighty on Instagram. Instagram and the website. One more time. Uh, Sherpa fifty two eighty dot com. Rob at Sherpa fifty two eighty dot com. And Sherpa is S H E R P A. If you spell like me, you probably need somebody yeah, to tell you. Auto, auto correct. <laughs> auto correct. No, I'll plug it on the bottom of this, man. But like I said, man, thank you. Wish you all the best, yeah, all the success you. that you and continued success that you're going to have. And also, too, with the podcast, man. I know it's going to be great. I'm definitely going to tap in and check it out, man. Awesome. And look, hopefully one day I can be a guest. Hey, look hey, here. Hey, you bet. One of, one, of, look, now. one of the billion he served in one the One of the world, billion. Man. Hey. I would encourage anybody, man, if you're looking to reach out or looking to, you know what I mean, you need help or anything like that, man, Rob gave his info, man, we're going to put it on the bottom of the screen, or just reach out here to anybody, man. We want to see everybody healthy, everybody at their best, man, and just uh, continue to be great in the community. And like I said, don't forget, man, Evolve Health uh, and Wellness uh, 5K, man. We're going to be there, McIntosh Lake, man. Even if you're not uh, going to run, come out and support, man. Great calls, man. Dog days of summer, man. Uh, hopefully uh, everything work out for Doc Shepler, man. Hey, we're rooting for him as well, man, at the competition, man. Hey, thank you again, King Penny, Rob. Hey, life coach, number one life coach in Colorado, baby. Got him here, on here first. All right, man. You guys have a good one, man. King Penny, we're out of here.